As soon as it became clear that the San Francisco 49ers did not have Trey Lance in their plans, the Dallas Cowboys, who've had, I would say, a little bit of a need uh, at backup quarterback for the last several years, hope that Trey Lance turns into what some people thought he would be uh, in the draft. But I think Ladies and gentlemen, the Trey Lance saga has officially concluded. The San Francisco 49ers have officially traded Trey Lance to my favorite football team. So before we get to the content. <laughs> oh wait, no, 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 not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. We're gonna win multiple copies of Madden 24 on my Instagram story at the Flight Mike, Snapchat story Flight Mike Snap, and on my Twitter account at Microphone NFL. And now that we get all that out of the way, work. Ladies and gentlemen, the NFL is finally back. But I'm gonna admit, the preseason is boring as shit. I mean, when the second stringers and third stringers come out, your boy does tend to fall asleep a little bit. But I found a way to make the preseason all the more interesting. Because ladies and gentlemen, we are back! Posting prize picks on the days that there are significant preseason games, starting from the Hall of Fame game, all the way to the Super Bowl, your boy is going to be making picks on his Instagram story. The picks are free, all you have to do is follow me on Instagram to get them. And if you haven't signed up for prize picks, right now when you use my promo code microphone, you'll double your deposit up to 100 dollars and thank you prize picks for the sponsorship my check one two one two what's going on everybody i apologize if i'm all nasty and sweaty i ran out of the gym the moment i found out this trade went down i was only nine sets in during the 2021 offseason the san francisco 49ers decided enough is enough we no longer can sit back and hope that jimmy garoppolo can either stay healthy throughout the regular season or perform the way an elite quarterback should in pivotal game moments so the 49 had the 12th overall pick in the 2021 NFL draft, a draft that was already generating a lot of hype or having a lot of depth at the quarterback position. At the first pick, you had Trevor Lawrence, who was going to be the number one overall pick no matter what, a player that was considered to be the next coming of Patrick Mahomes. Then you had Zach Wilson, who had tremendous upside, but was considered to be a little raw and a bit of a project. But if you could get it out of him, he was considered to be the next coming of Patrick Mahomes. Following that, you had Justin Fields, who for some reason was falling down draft boards just because he went to Ohio State University. And then you had two players that were quite literally the opposite of each other. Mac Jones, who was the most pro-ready quarterback in the entire NFL, who was ready to take over an offense from day one, who was praised for his processing speed and his ability to pick up offenses quick. And then you had Trey Lance, a player with tremendous physical tools, horrible accuracy, that could be a superstar one day, but needed some time to truly develop. The problem with teams and these developmental QBs is oftentimes they'll just select them and throw them into the fire. And the only case in NFL history where that's worked out is the Buffalo Bills and Josh Allen. Other examples include the Jacksonville Jaguars and Blaine Gabbard, the Jacksonville Jaguars and Blake Bortles. Players like this typically need some time to develop, otherwise they'll bust terribly. Trey Lance was built in that mold of QB. He could either be a Josh Allen type of QB or he could turn out to be Blake Bortles. It all depended on how patient you were with his development. But what was really strange about this is the San Francisco 49ers decided we're gonna trade up from the number 12 pick in the NFL draft to the number three pick in the NFL draft so we can make sure we get a QB. So the 49ers decided to give up two first round picks in addition to the 12th overall pick in the NFL draft to trade up to the number three overall pick in the NFL draft with the Miami Dolphins. By the way, for those of you guys wondering, the Miami Dolphins were able to turn those picks into Jalen Waddle, Tyree Kill, Bradley Chubb and Channing Tindall. The number 12 pick in the NFL draft ended up being Micah Parsons. So there's a lot of what if scenarios here. So immediately after trading up to the number three overall pick in the NFL draft, there was a lot of drama surrounding who the San Francisco 49ers were going to pick. You know, we, we have people at all the spots. You know, a lot of people we trust and people we meet with here over the next month. I normally don't like to go to them a bunch um, unless I feel I need, I have to, unless I have to for some reason. But um, I also have been kind of grown up in the idea that 
you, you don't like to go everywhere and show people things. And when you're sitting at 12 and stuff, I don't want to go to a bunch of quarterback pro days and things like that. And what made this situation weird is typically whenever you're giving up two first round picks to move up nine spots in the NFL draft, you have a player in mind. But immediately Kyle Shanahan was trying to decide between Trey Lance and Mac Jones, who was available at their original pick, by the way. So you guys know what would happen. The San Francisco 49ers gave Trey Lance the full Patrick Mahomes treatment. They drafted him with a high pick. If you take a look at the players that were drafted after Trey Trey Lance. It's a really impressive list. I mean, it's Kyle Pitts, Jamar Chase, Jalen Waddle, Penny Sewell, JC Horn, Patrick Sertan, Devontae Smith, Justin Fields, Micah Parsons, Rayshon Slater. And I'm going to just cut it off there. Immediately, Trey Lance broke his finger during his rookie season. And during his sophomore season, he was to be the guy under center. And the crazy part is Jimmy Garoppolo would remain on the roster as a backup. Trey Lance would only play in two games for the San Francisco 49ers. But following that, Jimmy Garoppolo would take over and Brock Purdy would emerge. Now, the unfortunate part for the San Francisco 49ers is last season, despite having the depth that they had at QB, once again, they had a typical 49ers season. Trey Lance got injured earlier in the season. Jimmy Garoppolo would get injured soon after. And then Brock Purdy would come out of nowhere and emerge. And then he would get injured in the NFC Championship. Very typical of the 49ers. Quarterback depth was a huge point of emphasis for them once again. And in this situation, they decided to go after Sam Darnold and signed him in the offseason. Now, Sam Darnold had a really good preseason, and we can't discount that. So much so that Trey Lance got benched in favor for Sam Darnold. Yeah, in our last video, we reported how Trey Lance was now quarterback number three for the San Francisco 49ers, and he was really pissed off about this. Rightfully so. One moment, you're supposed to be the guy in San Francisco. They're committed to your development as a player. Four games later and an injury later, and all of a sudden, you're the third quarterback on the depth chart. Now, following this announcement, Trey Lance wouldn't even show up to practice. But Kyle Shanahan gave us a little bit of a look behind the scenes as to what the reasoning was behind their decision in this interview. Uh, I'm really hoping so. I mean, this isn't a thing that we're giving up on Trey. This is more of how Brock played in his seven games, and that was decided before the season started. And then how good Sam's looked. They both looked good. But we do have to make a decision here. And you only get so many reps at it, and um, we feel... Um, you know, starting about 10 days ago, Sam really separated himself and um, we got to keep it real in that way. But mm -hmm. I feel very, very fortunate to have both of them here. I really hope when it's said and done that all three of these guys are here and uh, you never know when that's going to come up. We needed four guys last year. Um, doesn't happen much, but um, if we can have Trey as an option here, um, I would feel extremely happy about that. And I think the other quarterbacks in our room would, and I think our team would. Trey's a very well-liked like guy, one of the better people I've been around. Now, Shanahan said that he hopes that the San Francisco 49ers would keep Trey Lance, but quite literally within 24 hours, we found out that that wasn't going to be the case. Because ladies and gentlemen, according to Ian Rappaport and Adam Schefter, the San Francisco 49ers have finally decided to trade Trey Lance. And they're trading him to the Dallas Cowboys, which makes this story way, way crazier. And I'll tell you why in just a sec. First, let's talk about compensation. Trey Lance is being traded from the San Francisco 49ers to the Dallas Cowboys for a fourth round pick. So if you're keeping score, the San Francisco 49ers traded three first round picks and a third round pick to move up to select Trey Lance with the number three overall pick and then traded him to the Dallas Cowboys for a mid-round pick. They did this after giving Trey Lance four games to prove himself. So Trey Lance was essentially paid $27 million for less than 300 snaps and four starts with the San Francisco 49ers. If the 49ers selected anyone within the next 10 picks following Trey Lance, it would have been a stud. I mean, anyone from Kyle Pitts to Patrick Sertan to Micah Parsons, it would have been fantastic. They didn't even need to move up and give up all those picks. Imagine what they could have done with the additional picks. They quite literally turned the Dolphins into a contender at this point. And I know what 49ers fans are probably going to say, Trey Lance isn't so good. Yeah, when you invested three first round picks in this guy and he's only played in four games and he hasn't really shown you much in those four games, obviously you're going to say he's not that good. But the Cowboys are taking on a player that was selected third overall and just gave a fourth round pick for him. Even furthermore, the situation that I liken this to and that I'm drawing a parallel to 
is the Green Bay Packers when they selected Jordan Love one year prior to light a fire underneath Aaron Rodgers' ass. Now, I don't know if you guys remember, but Aaron Rodgers in the 2019 season played horrible by Aaron Rodgers standards. He threw 26 touchdowns and four interceptions, which I guess for Aaron Rodgers, I mean, up until 2022, I guess was below his standards and below his expectations. The Green Bay Packers decided to select his successor, Jordan Love. The next year, Aaron Rodgers rebounds, 71% completion percentage, 48 touchdowns and five interceptions. The year after, 37 touchdowns and four interceptions, over 4,000 yards passing. He had two remarkable seasons and one back-to-back -back MVPs. No, I'm not saying Dak Prescott is going to win MVP, but this is remarkable motivation for Dak Prescott because you also have to understand Dak Prescott's contract is close to expiration. So the Dallas Cowboys can go in a myriad of ways here. The first way is just have Trey Lance sitting in the background on his rookie scale contract until 2026, which by the way, his rookie contract expires if the Cowboys exercise their fifth year option on him in 2026. Option one is Dak Prescott comes out and has a remarkable season following a season where he threw 23 touchdowns to 15 interceptions. This is the motivation he needed to really step up his game to a brand new level. And Trey Lance sits behind him and tries to develop into the quarterback that he could be before a quarterback controversy ensues. Option two is the Cowboys eventually decide to move on from Dak Prescott. Bear in mind, Dak's contract is voidable in 2025. Trey Lance could technically stay on a rookie scale contract if the Cowboys exercise his fifth year option until 2026. So what this gives the Dallas Cowboys is the ultimate leverage on Dak Prescott in any type of future contract negotiation as well, because a contract extension could come up for Dak as well, because he has a tremendous cap hit on the Dallas Cowboys, not this season, but next season. So what this ultimately gives the Dallas Cowboys is a myriad of options for how they want their future to play out. At the end of the day, I don't care who you are, you can't say that this is an L by the Dallas Cowboys. This trade is an A+. Whether Trey Lance develops into a superstar or not, the Cowboys only have to spend a fourth round pick to truly figure that out. It gives them flexibility with Dak Prescott in the future and gives them someone that they could turn to if Dak Prescott truly doesn't seem like the guy that could get him to the Super Bowl. But the ultimate loser in this situation is the San Francisco 49ers. If you stayed pat at the number 12 overall pick, you could have either selected Mac Jones, you could have taken Micah Parsons. There are so many directions you could have gone in in this particular instance. If you kept your additional two first round picks, who knows what you could have done with those picks as well. Those are two additional players that could have been studs on rookie scale contracts. And there's been times where teams have taken players where things didn't work out. But if it makes sense, I won't ever roast the team for making those decisions. But in this particular instance, you had the San Francisco 49ers trade up to the number three overall pick because they wanted to select a quarterback to take the reins from Jimmy Garoppolo. They then decided to take the biggest project QB in the NFL draft. Once he wasn't able to beat Patrick Mahomes within four games, they decided to trade him to the Dallas Cowboys for a fourth round pick. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you say. This is David Johnson getting traded for DeAndre Hopkins levels of incompetence by that front office. And if I'm a San Francisco 49ers fan, I would be really, really angry at that front office because this displays clear ineptitude by the San Francisco 49ers. And whenever a front office fumbles this badly, it begins to shake the confidence of most of that team's fan base. So let me know in the comment section down below how you feel about this. If you're a San Francisco 49ers fan, how do you feel about John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan right now? I think Kyle Shanahan's a great head coach. I had tremendous optimism in this move. I thought Trey Lance was set up for success. If you're a Dallas Cowboy fan, do you think Trey Lance is gonna be our future under center? Because things are about to get spicy at the quarterback position for Dallas. There's so much as a result. There's so much going down as a result of this move. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike. I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.